Namaste. Hello, Dr. Kamal. Uh, welcome to our weekly Pure Bliss Akram interview sessions. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Carolina? I'm doing okay. I, I'm really happy that today I'm asking questions and you have the difficult answers. Yes, it's my turn today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so first, I wanted to uh, formally introduce you. Uh, you are one of the colleagues and founding fathers of Pure Bliss Akram, and you have also an incredible curriculum. You have uh, you are a BAMS doctor and alumnus of renowned government Ayurvedic Medical College and hospital in India, located in Kurukshetra. Uh, and uh, this is amazing because you told me that you were also doing internship, right, in Ayurvedic hospital for like six months? Yeah, it was in the same college, this one, yeah. Uh, and then uh, after that, and after your internship, you did the postgraduate in Panchakarma, so this is uh, this is really important part yeah. of Ayurveda, in Manipal University, yes? Yes, And true. your specialty was? Uh, it's a whole subject where we do neurological disorders, autoimmune disorders, and some gynecological disorders. So mine was gynecological and neurotic disorders, yes. Wow, very ambitious, very difficult, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you have been working in Ayurveda for over six years. And uh, what is also uh, set you apart from other Ayurvedic doctors that you really feel and you really believe what you do, right? Yeah, true. And yeah. I try to apply in myself as well, so that I know the real benefits or the pros and cons of the Ayurvedic treatment, you know? <laughs> yes, th this is amazing. So um, uh, going back to, to your specialty, gynecology, um, what could be a reason why uh, someone, a uh, woman misses a uh, period? O obviously, uh, not talking about the, the most obvious one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the pregnancy one, yeah. <laughs> But uh, when we talk about missed period or the irregular period, it's the most common topic I have been going through in my patients, uh, especially the young girls, where we presume that they should be having the regular periods because the health is good, hormone balance is there. But nowadays, the scenario has been changed totally. So the girls, they are having their menarche, like the first bleeding period very early at the age of 10 or 11 which used wow. to be around That's which used to be around 13, 14 years yes. so that is also one of the reason that they have started uh, their periods early and the body was not yet uh, prepared for that hormonal drastic hormonal imbalance so that's one of the reason the other one is improper diet as you know today's like you know digital world is there and people are busy with their mobile phones all the time internet and all yeah. so they are not having proper diet stress is also one of the reason uh, i would mention and uh, the personal hygiene it matters a lot and the work and the lifestyle balance it's also a very important reason because nowadays you have to balance your work life as well as your personal life so in that chaos you are unable to you know focus more on your uh, health and the uh, and especially females, they are not able to focus more on their uh, this menstrual cycles. So these few are the reasons. It, this yeah. is very interesting because uh, the the early period. It's not only in India, but it's uh, or Australia where you live right now, but it's all around the world. Why do you think this is happening? Yeah, this is that's what I'm telling you because nowadays it's very common. It's not about in India; it's about everywhere. Yes, diet has changed. Uh, we are not taking that of a healthy diet. We are more into outside food, junk food, and easy to get food, you know, uh, ready to prepare and all these things, which doesn't create enough uh, nutrients that are required by the body. So that's one of the major reasons, I think. Diet plays, you know, 70% of the role in any of our health concern. Yes. So yes. that's why diet is very important. Yeah. Because, uh, for instance, uh, I heard uh, and I read the explanation that uh, very often, at least in the the Western world where people eat uh, too much meat and uh, animal protein, that the meat has uh, a lot of growth hormone in them. So when you eat the yes. growth hormone, you start developing the secondary sexual characteristics too early. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That too, when you are taking it from outside, your body naturally doesn't produce it. 
So yeah. it just suppresses the natural production within the body. So that's a synthetic hormone, you would say. And that's not good for the hormones, especially in females. Yeah. So this is uh, this is one of the reasons uh, the food that we eat, the industrial food that we eat for the gynecological problems, right? Yes. It's one of the biggest reasons, I would say. And I have seen it myself in my patients as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. These are the reasons. But this is this is crazy because on one side uh, you have the uh, the animal proteins with the growth hormone and you have junk food and you have the industrial processed food with uh, preservatives and everything in it, <laughs> and then yes. on the other side uh, you keep telling me that uh, a lot of women have anemia too. Yeah, anemia um, is one of the biggest reason of maternal death as well, you know. Wow. Uh, you might have heard that a lady passed away just after her delivery of the child because of the loss of blood, because there was not sufficient blood when she was pregnant. So that's one of the thing, anemia, which has been ignored, especially by females. And we just thought of uh, doing our work and not concentrating uh, on our health. Anemia is basically the loss of red blood cells in your blood, right? Yes. Which is mainly responsible for the formation of hemoglobin, for transportation of oxygen in your body. So if that uh, hormone is not working properly, you will be suffering from anemia. And it again has a lot of causes, you know, stress is there. And then you feel fatigue, dizziness and irritability, depression is there. So these are the symptoms that a woman can see when she's having anemia. So if uh, if you are a vegan or vegetarian and you are pregnant, uh, what would you recommend uh, for women to take? I strongly believe that there are more of a vegetarian sources for uh, iron deficiency or is it a calcium deficiency? But it has become, uh, you know, a taboo. Like you have to eat meat. You have to eat eggs if you want sufficient proteins and the nutrition. But it's not like that exactly. Yeah. They do provide you. They do provide you uh, nutrition. But that's no, not the only source, you know. We have a lot of vegetarian sources like uh, honey is the simplest and the easiest available source that anyone can have here. It's rich in iron. It's rich in folate and folic acid. That is mm -hmm. a thing which is uh, given to the pregnant ladies in the initial first trimester. I didn't know so, that. Really? Honey? Honey. Oh, it creates, contains iron and some of the vitamins as well. Huh. So it's a very good source and there are a lot of ways to consume it. It's not like you have to eat it raw because sometimes people don't like it in a raw form. Sure. You can just have it with lukewarm water, some honey and some lemon in the morning. So that's a very good way to take that. And another source I would mention is spinach. Yes. It is a very good green leafy vegetable that mm -hmm. contains a lot of potassium as well as iron and vitamin B6 and B12 as well. So that's a very good source. You can add it in a salad or you can make it a vegetable any way you like it. Okay. Uh, we do have sources like pomegranate. That's a very delicious fruit that can be, I think, found in most of the places. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, pomegranate is also rich in uh, iron and calcium. And uh, next one is beetroot. I guess that's the most uh, popular. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, it looks like as well. It contains a lot of iron itself. Yes. <laughs> the color. Yeah, yeah. color. Yes. So it's easy to take it as well. You can make it a juice out of it. You can have it in salads or you can make even a soup of beetroot soup as well. Hmm. So yeah, it's a good, very good source. In my part of the world, very often you have the fermented uh, beet juice or fermented beet juice that you make into a soup. <laughs> oh, that's the source yeah. of iron? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's great. Yes. We okay. should know all the sources in different parts of the world, you know. We have audiences yes. across the world. Yes. Sure. <laughs> because uh, you can use it. Yeah, absolutely. Like the honey, I was not totally not aware of. So uh, you have a healthy baby, you delivered everything and now you're starting to work, uh, you're probably breastfeeding. Any uh, any uh, any foods or any supplements that you would recommend or herbs uh, to help with the uh, breastfeeding? Uh, the first herb that comes to my mind is Shatavri. Yeah. As I always say, that's one of my favorite. <laughs> So yeah, shatavri is a galactogogue. Actually, it helps to produce uh, milk in the breastfeeding mothers. It's good for the, you. we call it sutika. 
the purpurium period after the delivery you know ah. we call it as the sutika in ayurveda so as per indian traditions there are a lot of uh, delicious dishes that a mother is given to recover herself and to produce enough milk for her child ah. give example yeah. please yeah. <laughs> <I'm curious. laughs> okay so i'll give you an example uh, i'll give, tell you the single herbs that we use like okay. first one is ghee uh, you might have heard about you know yes. pure ghee it contains a lot of uh, healthy nutrients it helps to recover and ayurveda considers that uh, ghee is also used to you know uh, join things like it helps in sandhan karam huh. whenever you are having a wound it helps to heal that you can just apply it locally as well so ghee is something which uh, i don't think will have any negative impact whose whatsoever the condition is so we consider it one of the best thing to have after delivery okay. it helps to recover uh, very quickly and secondly we have this uh, laddu made up of uh, sesame seeds and ghee and some of the dry fruits you know they are quite sedative when you my eat it you feel it. Like... <laughs> my <laughs> kids love it and use it before <laughs> running 20 kilometers this is like yes. an energy bomb <laughs> energy yes. yes it contains a lot of energy you know yeah. because anyhow the woman is so tired that time uh, going through a lot of phases uh, the body uh, changes a lot of uh, the hormones drastically changes and everything is there so these are the things that you can include and uh, one more is dashmula that is a very common herb in ayurveda i want to mention it because it is used in this period that you asked me after the delivery so it helps to recover quite fast and dashmula it's like 10 herbs right combined together yes. yeah yes dashmula yeah. it has two groups like panchamul two times two types of groups and each of the group contains five herbs yeah so wow. it's really good and uh, multitasker in ayurveda we can use it with different in different ways as per the condition so it's very good in uh, after delivery as well great so okay so you uh, you already uh, are breastfeeding how how long should a woman breastfeed breastfeed sorry the, uh, according to ayurveda ayurveda believes that at least of a one year the baby should have uh, the mother's feed the mother's milk because that time the baby is not in a condition to digest outside food or outside milk that's the best and the easily digestible thing a baby can have from uh, her or his mother so it contains a lot of vitamins and a special enzyme called colostrum exactly the mother's yes, milk has colostrum and that is much needed to prevent baby from a lot of infections to build up the immunity in the baby so ayurveda considers it as a one year but still six months is mandatory what we say because nowadays i have seen patients i have seen females they are not able to feed for one whole year yeah work so, and demanding care yes. yeah. yeah okay <laughs> so you have a healthy beautiful baby two to three years old and now you start having white discharges uh what is that and what is the remedy for that so white discharge is something we call it in medical terms as leucorrhea mm -hmm. and uh, it is sometimes it is physiological that is natural secreted in the female's body and sometimes it's pathological so two types of discharges are there yeah. one is physiological that is required by your body that should be there because some of the secretions in the body are there which are good for your body to provide the lubrication you know Mm -hmm. and second time uh, second thing is pathological when the secretions or the discharges are more than required amount that is in excess and uh, i will tell you the how do i know yeah. that i have excess <laughs> that's the next thing i am telling you okay. so the natural one is when it is of white color thin and whitish in color that's the physiological and the normal one okay and that is found more Uh, around your menstrual cycle like before your period starts it will be more at that time and that is quite natural because your body is preparing itself for the next menstruation and the second is pathological where you need to see your doctor is when the quantity has increased across a limit mm -hmm. like it's that your undergarments are getting uh, spoiled and everything the color of the discharge also changes you know the normal one is white color uh, and the when it is an infectious discharge 
it's like greenish or brownish and yellowish in color sometimes yes infection right 100 percent yeah can be a fungal infection it can be a yeast infection Wow. So we need to differentiate it when you visit a doctor. So this way you can differentiate because sometimes I have seen a personally that patient came to me and asked that I have this white discharge, but I need to ask. They don't know that this normal discharge is required by their body mm -hmm. because when it is not there, there will be a lot of dryness in the body and some but lubrication is needed sure. inside the vagina. Yeah, so that's the normal one. And of course, Ayurveda has uh, right herbs in case of uh, fungal or uh, bacteria infection. Yes. yes. Okay. Because uh, when a patient, when a female have this leucorrhea, she suffers from symptoms like fatigue. Ah. And a lot of, um, one of the most common symptoms that I have seen is backache. Because uh, they are not able to connect that their backache is because of this white discharge. Interesting. A lot of... Yeah. Yes, a lot of weakness is there, fatigue is there, mood swings are there, and they feel like resting all the time, not doing anything else, irritation around the groin area. So these are the few symptoms, and uh, Ayurveda obviously has answered to all these symptoms as well. And for that, uh, we have uh, things like uh, the top most on my list is yogurt. That's the thing which you can include in your diet as well, daily routine, because it contains a very good uh, bacteria, the lactobacillus bacteria in it. And we consider it like curd and the yogurt as a probiotic, which helps you provide good bacteria for your gut. And uh, the interesting and thing that you might uh, think about it is that you can apply the curd on your groin and the vaginal area as well. Yeah. When you are eating it, yes. it's working in other way. And when you are applying it, it's working in the other way. So it has a very good effect and tremendous effects I have seen. So, so this, this is like, is... Uh, sometimes you can buy in the pharmacy, it's called, I think, vaginal flush. And uh, I've, I've read uh, very different opinions. Some people say it's incredible. Some people say it's totally useless. So uh, I would prefer to, to, put, to use yogurt than a <laughs> chemical <laughs> like flash, like a soap inside. Yeah. I would say there are a lot of uh, things in the market out there that yeah. say that it prevents infections, especially those ones which are scented. Uh, I have seen that it doesn't work properly because they focus more on the scents ah, to yes. provide that thing to the page, uh, the customer, but they don't focus on the con uh, constituents that they uh, provide in it. So better to have uh, natural washes. Like you can uh, use Thriftly as well yeah. uh, because ah. it's a very good antibacterial. Yes. So you can just make a decoction out of it and wash your area with it. So that's a very good antibacterial and antifungal, I okay. would say. So uh, you were talking about the very important thing, you know, uh, having infection and being annoyed or like uh, not in a very good mood. That leads us to a uh, next question, like PMS. So yeah. uh, you said that female ask you if PMS even exists, really? Yeah, Sheesh. but uh, you know, Patients ask me and they answer it themselves as well. When I ask them, what do they feel before the menstruation starts or during the menstruation? And most of them, like five out of 10, will tell me the same thing. Like mood swings is on the top list. The Almost everybody have it. <laughs> you yes. might have experienced it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Second one is uh, the bloating in the stomach. That is also very common. Indigestion is there. And uh, then mood swings, fatigue, and the weakness, and uh, you know, pain in the lower abdomen is also one of the most common symptom of PMS that I have seen. So, uh, and the tender breast as well, there is soreness in the breast when you touch it. Mm -hmm. So these are the symptoms, and based on it, I would say that PMS really exists, the premenstrual syndrome, yeah, because it is there, and it's a very big indication that you are going to have your next menstruation. Yeah. And you're not pregnant. Congratulations. So that's why it's very important to have these symptoms as well. Yeah. yeah. It's real in uh, the way I have seen it. Yeah. So uh, to maintain uh, a healthy cycle and to lower your PMS or to have uh, less mood swings, what uh, common herbs would Ayurveda use for that? So... 
here aloe vera comes first to my mind okay. because uh, its sanskrit name is kumari and uh, in hindi or sanskrit kumari is a girl you know young girl so we can just relate that it's one of the uh, good friend of females as shatavri mm -hmm. uh, as you told me in the previous video the wife of 100 husbands so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like that name. <laughs> I, yeah and when i like a sister or a cousin sister to shatavri you know yeah. you can use it in various ways you can grow it in your home use the fresh gel and make a paste of it with honey and uh, have it in the morning the first thing Wow. So that's a very good thing to uh, regularize your PMS symptoms to smoothen your menstrual cycle. So aloe vera is every so, day, or do you do you take it just uh, before you start having before the menstruation? Yes. Okay. Do not take it during the menstruation. Yes. Okay. And uh, second one is uh, you can have this gutuchi. You might have heard it, giloe. Yes. That's a very good herb and was very popularized during the COVID times. Yes. I took People it. Might have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, apart from these herbs, I would also recommend some relaxation techniques like you should go for some soothing pranayams, some reflection technique. Uh, when you have to deal with your mood swings, you just have to divert your mind to some household course. So these are the ways you have to just handle your uh, PMS symptoms with the help of these herbs. I think and, uh, once, uh, one, sorry, I apologize for, for interjecting, I, but uh, one one of the uh, uh, one of the reasons or one of the uh, issues with PMS that sometimes women deny it. So uh, as long as the fifty percent that you said already realize that they have PMS, then they have they can really prepare for it mentally and physically, right? So they are already winning the game. Yes, you are uh, right. But, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to convince uh, the females that it's a quite normal thing and you just have to accept it if you want a very normal menstrual cycle. Because, you know, when you have a disturbed menstrual cycle, having these PMS symptoms, you all you have some negative thoughts in mind as well. Why do women suffer all the time and all these things? But... What I think is that you don't need to curse every time yourself or to the supreme power that why it is all with us. <laughs> you know, you have a solution. He has given you the solutions as well to have a normal and a smooth menstrual cycle. So it depends on your perspective, actually. Yeah, always, right? Everything starts in your mind. Yes, in your subconscious mind as well. Yeah, yeah. So what Ayurveda thinks of uh, causes for gynecological disorder? The Disorders, sorry. <laughs> Many. What uh, we have observed uh, in my five or six years of experience is that we have used, uh, we are talking about this thing since our uh, interview has started. Mm -hmm. And I will list one of the, list all of them one by one. The first one is the stress factor. Yeah. Second one is the uh, poor diet and the lifestyle. <clears throat> Third one is the nutritional deficiency, which is because of, again, improper diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, there is a lot of uh, reasons of gynecological disorders that you just ignore it. Instead of uh, going to see a doctor, you just think that it will go on its own and you ignore it. And uh, after that, there's hormone imbalance because of this uh, mental stress, work stress. And secondly, that I have told you in the initial that nowadays females have started having their first period so early. Mm -hmm. So because of that, and one of the common disorder that I think uh, we might have heard is PCOD that is also developed because of this. So these are the few reasons responsible for a lot of gynecological issues. Yeah, like uh, in my family, one of the problems is the uh, uterine uh, fibroids. And, uh, yeah, in the uh, previous generations, uh, women, yes, had it. But it's also kind of strange because uh, right now the general tendency is not to remove them surgically. But before, everybody wanted to cut everything out of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, what I really think is that it depends on the size and the location of the fibroids. Sure. Depending on that, we need to decide, it will it be curable by medicines or some panchakarma procedures or detoxification? 
Mm. Or we need the surgical uh, view only. So uh, if diet, uh, stress, we know how to control or we we know, uh, we, we think we know how to control our stress. But then diet, if the diet is so important, what do we eat before menstruation? Okay, so I'll be telling you what you should eat before menstruation and during menstruation as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, because uh, we have talked about PMS, right? Just yeah. before this question. And PMS is because of the water retention in the body most of the times. And what leads to water retention is a lot of salty food that we intake. That is in the form of uh, junk food. We do have these bakery products, these chips, and all these junk foods, nachos, and all these things which are quite common nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and we are taste buds have also, you know, relied on these things a lot. So a lot of salty products, a lot of sugary products uh, that contain a lot of sugar are main reason for the water retention in the body that leads to PMS symptoms. So to, first thing is to avoid salty products, to avoid sugary products and have a very simple and a blend diet which includes ghee, barley and the other thing is red rice. It is a very, uh, you know, common thing that we use, that Ayurveda says one should have it during menstruation as well as before menstruation. What and does the, the red rice have? Uh... Uh, Actually, yes, it so is, so good. doesn't contain a lot of starch and carbs like the white rice. Uh -huh. It contains a lot of nutrients. It's a very good source of calcium, potassium and iron. Uh, some quantity of iron as well. So I would consider it's a very healthy diet. We call it Shastik Shali. Uh, that is the red rice. And I think it's quite available in the markets yes. as well. Yes. Here also it's quite available. So... We should prefer it, uh, although it doesn't taste that much as good of a white rice or a brown rice, but it is more healthier than that. So you should have uh, this kind of diet. You can have some kind of khichri. You can have dalia or porridge, oats, these things which are easily digestible during the menstruation because your body is going through a lot of hormone changes. You are losing blood. So you need to take things which maintains your iron and the calcium levels. Because you are losing blood, you are having a lot of weakness. So these are the food changes that you might do in your uh, daily routine. Okay. And then during menstruation? Yeah, during menstruation only. I told you this. Okay. Uh, after. The yes. after, you should uh, continue with your normal diet after two or three days. Because your body is still in the recovery period. You have to maintain that blood loss. You should take food rich in iron. I told you, jaggery is also good. Spinach, honey, fruits like cranberry. Cranberry is also a very good source of uh, iron and various minerals and vitamins. So this way, you should avoid curd and mucus-containing products like mushrooms. You should avoid during menstruation. It contains mucus. So you should need. You should know about. You should have some knowledge about what you are eating actually. So you should uh, decide it judicially what you are eating. And that's what you do, right? Uh, in Pure Bliss Akram, you come up with diet uh, for your patients gyne to support gynecological functions. That is our utmost priority when we are having a consultation with the patient. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, you know, uh, our last question, it's usually uh, the, uh, the, the most difficult one. What is the... Uh, the fastest recovery of a patient that you've experienced in your practice? Okay. So I will say uh, I was having a patient who was just 12 years old, a female patient of 12 oh. years of age. And uh, she was having heavy bleeding since her first uh, menstrual period, like her menarche. And mm -hmm. she was uh, like, the bleeding was going on for like, 10, 15 days and then again coming before a month and it was after an interval of 25 days she was getting her period again and again. Wow. That was leading to a lot of problems like anemia that we have discussed and a lot of pigmentation on her skin and uh, she was not having enough energy to study. So all these symptoms I have seen but what I have done because she was just a young lady who can't just have hormones all the time and I was also trying to avoid that thing. I just started with a very basic medicines of Dashmula and a medicine which contains aloe vera because 
first of all, the concept of Ayurveda is that you should start with balancing your Agni, your digestive fire, which is responsible for all the disorders. And when I was working on her, this deep and pachan, her digestive fire, she was relieved more than 45%. And that was within 10 or 15 days, of course. And that was the fastest recovery I have seen. That's so wonderful. After, it makes yeah. you feel really happy about <laughs> the career that you have chosen. <laughs> and now she, that patient is in contact with me and uh, she just uh, consult me whenever there is some uh, small little issue with her. So I feel great. Uh, talking to such patients that okay Ayurveda is helping a lot of people wonderful really wonderful to hear that okay <laughs> Dr. Kamal well, always uh, wonderful talking to you and namaste yeah. and uh, yes all the best uh, thank you so much for this wonderful interview we'll see you soon see you in one week and remember yeah. to subscribe to our channel Yes, pure bliss Akram and do uh, book an appointment for yourself in case you have any issue that we have discussed here. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Namaste.